All right, everybody, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name's Trevor, I'm with Market Delta, and we have Anthony as well. Um, today, we're gonna go over the, just it's the mid-year 2018 software release. I wanna show some of the new features and functionality that's available. It's not an exhaustive list, but we're gonna hit the high points. So we're gonna kinda tag team this. I'm gonna take uh, some, he's gonna take some. And uh, it's informal. If you have questions, ask them, and we'll do our best to answer them uh, on the spot or um, at some point during the webinar for sure. It is being recorded and will be posted up to our YouTube page, Vimeo page website, uh, for later viewing if, uh, if you want to review it. So there's going to be some pretty neat things that we'll show you that you'll, you'll be able to refer back. So don't feel like you have to catch every single point. Um, you'll, you'll have a resource to check back to. So here's the things we're going to cover. Um, I'm going to tackle the bid ask footprint profile. This is a new footprint type. Uh, it's really neat and there's some neat, uh, ways that you can customize it as well. So I'm going to show how to manipulate it, kind of what the settings are, and then we'll look at a few use cases as well. Um, and then Anthony's going to um, hit the edge zones. Um, there's some great stuff there. Really nice new enhancement on that. Um, and he'll cover that. And then I'll go ahead and tackle those other four, but they'll go a little bit quicker. So those are the high points. That's what we're going to get through. I don't expect it being much more than an hour, uh, just so you, you know what to budget for time. Probably be be quicker. So anyway, let me jump right into the software. This isn't a PowerPoint. This is literally going to be a real uh, walkthrough of the software and how to do the different things. So this is just a page I created. This is for my convenience, so I have the things built. But I'm going to show you how to do this. And uh, like I said, the first thing we want to tackle is the bid ask footprint profile. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, stretch this chart out. And um, what is the bid ask footprint profile? Well, you can see, I got it on the screen here, but first let's show you how, how you even get to this. If you right click the footprint, choose modify footprint. Um, there's styles. And you'll notice if you're running the latest version, which most of you probably are, if you're not, you can visit our website and under resources, there's downloads, and you can download and just upgrade, and you'll have this. But uh, it's a feature. It's included on all Market Delta desktops. And you'll see now this bid ask profile. That's what we're looking at. And when you select this, basically, I've customized mine a little bit. So maybe I should uh, do this. Let's just do a new chart, or right-click chart, add chart. I'm going to choose footprint. So it opens up a default footprint for me. And here's what you would do is just right click modify and in balance, or I'm sorry, click wherever under style, whatever yours says and choose bid ask profile and hit apply. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove these edge zones for now just to keep a clean, cleaner view. And this is what it'll look like for you uh, out of the box, most likely. And what this is, it takes a footprint, price by price, and it creates a uh, volume distribution to the left, on the left side of it, and a volume distribution to the right. On the right side, it's the ask traded volume, and on the left side, it's the bid traded volume. So you get like too many volume profiles set back to back. And it's neat because what you get is this shape. It's almost like you've got a spindle. You've got an axis up the middle and it gives you a profile on the left and a profile on the right. And that alone is provides you a really unique view of volume and as well as order flow because you get this the colors. Now, some of the little tricks that I want to show you um, are going to be having to do with coloring um, and some other things. But let's just take and click display. Here's, by default, it's going to be probably set like this, where it's set to auto color and text. Un I'm recommending uncheck auto color, hit apply. You can see 
it just defaults to the text color that's set here. And you can click that, you can set it to be a lighter color and hit apply. Do whatever works for you, it depends on your background. Like if I go with a black text, that may not work, although that may work for some. Uh, it's actually not too bad. Um, but I've been going with the lighter and that's kind of where I'm gonna stick. Also, if you don't care about the numbers, and by the way, these numbers are simply the volume, so you've got a graphical representation of it as well as a textual representation of the volume that occurred at each price. If you uncheck text and hit apply, then you just get that nice graphical way. So these are, again, these are some of the little tips and tricks in manipulating this that you can do. Um, another thing that I wanted to show is, oh, not show, but explain, and this was a question uh, from, from Barbara, was what do all these colors mean that you see on here? Well, let's just take, let's take this one right here. You guys see this bar right here? So on the, on the right side, this is the bid or the ask traded volume, and this is the bid traded volume at each price. The width of these bars, the, how fat they are or how far they stick out, that is representative of the volume. So the wider it is, the more volume that traded there. So you can kind of see that, at least on within this one, there was more volume that traded here versus uh, the bid traded volume. However, if you add them up, that would give you like the total volume. So this looks like it's probably the POC for the bar because it's it is pretty wide when you add these up. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, ask questions, but I want to kind of give a walkthrough of how what all these colors mean. And you can see these colors are set right here. So if you don't like green and you want to go with um, this is one that I've been playing with, like a lighter green and a lighter red, it apply. It gives me a little more contrast. But that's where you can set those colors. Now, within this, you can see, do you see this right here? See how you got a darker green? That's the delta. So the uh, each price, each price within, you know, this is a price, this is a price, this is a price. Each price has a delta, either positive or negative delta. And so you can see that this one has a positive delta. That's why it's that's why you see it here. Um, positive delta here, positive. This one, the, these prices actually have a negative delta because you can see the dark the dark reds, right? So it's showing you the delta within the bar, but it's also showing you that bid traded volume and ask traded volume and total volume. Any questions on that up till now? So at first it might seem a little confusing, but you just need to kind of get a get a feel for it. Now a little trick that you may not have thought thought to do is if you click this dominant right here, hit apply, this makes it easier to see which side experienced uh, more volume, not so much more volume, but the delta. So you could see here that it's either showing you, it makes it clear which side was either, was it a positive or negative delta. You can see, let's take this bar right here. These bars were positive delta, these ones were all negative deltas, so that's why it's only showing you those. So it's a unique, it's a unique way to uh, mess around with these. I'm going to go ahead and undo that though and turn it back on. I'm going to go back and you can see for anybody that's joining late we're looking at the bid ask profile that's the style of footprint we're looking at um, now let's take a look at some of the things that you, you want to pay attention to now this chart I don't have any edge zones on it I don't have any indicator studies it's just a, a pure bid ask profile chart um, my source I'm looking at a range bar Let's just change it to a uh, five minute bar.
Okay, so this is a five minute bar. So one of the first things that's gonna jump out to you with this is gonna be, you're gonna see shapes, shapes of uh, these profiles, these uh, bid ask profiles. And that's gonna be one of the key things you'll probably focus in on that, that's of use outside of seeing the higher volume and thin spots. You're gonna see like this one, you got thin volume down at the lows and as it traded higher it got wider and wider. It was the volume was increasing as price traded higher. Another thing to point out is and these are this is a five minute bar so you you're getting unique shapes and patterns but it's only five minutes and the S P only trades so many prices. Um, I'm gonna duplicate this and change it to crude oil C L E and you get more prices at trade here on this. But one of the, you're gonna see patterns that are uh, more of a D-shaped, potentially, or a P-shaped. And I'm not trying to bring in a uh, market profile or anything like that, but I'm, what I want you to see is absorption. Absorption is a pattern that a lot of market delta users look for, where we see absorption on the bid where we see aggressive selling into willing buyers, resting buy orders, uh, or uh, absorption on the sell side where we have passive sellers absorbing uh, demand. And so what you'll see, let me see if I can find a good example. Well, let's just take a look at this one. This isn't the best example, but you can see this is kind of that D, a little bit of a D shape, although it's literally right on this low print. Kind of, it's real fat and bulging here at the bottom. So as this market traded lower, it finally, right down here, the, it, it hit a point where there were certainly some buyers willing to absorb it. Notice this is really almost a high volume print uh, for the day and it was all in the bid. So there's a big buy order sitting there absorbing that. So that's, that would be an exa example of absorption where we see a lot of buying occurring passively absorbing the selling. And vice versa, um, the other pattern would be where we have it more at the top where we have resting sellers sitting there absorbing aggressive buying. Now this is a pattern, if you're new to Market Delta, it's definitely more on the advanced side, but I'm bringing it up because this footprint type really helps um, spotlight it, makes it easier to see, I feel. So, um, all right, let's see. Looking here at some questions. Okay, Barbara's asking what is the delta? I'm not sure if you're asking what the number is or if you're asking what the definition of delta is. The definition of delta would be it's the net difference between the aggressive buying and aggressive selling. It's giving you an idea of order flow. So this is showing you order flow within each at each price within the bar. And we'll probably this is just a this webinar is meant to introduce you to these new features, not to be a comprehensive overview of each one and related concepts. We do have a video, I believe, called What is Delta? And that's that's probably one you'd want to check out, Barbara. All right. Um, or email us and we can we can send you those resources. So that's, a, let's see, what else did I have written down on this? It also shows you the thin spots. Let's go back to the E-mini. It really makes evident and clear where there's where the market moves kind of quick through, um, and I'll change this to the uh, time frame Anthony looks at a lot, where we have the uh, reversal charts. And let's change. Whoops. I'll change it to a one by four. That's he uses that a lot, and he he can speak to this when he's on, but. You can see you can see areas where it'll slip through. There's just not a lot of trading, uh, and then where it comes back and establishes value. So when it's all stretched out like this, it doesn't look that good. I'm going to change it to a 15 minute. See if it looks a little bit better. Whoops. I'm sorry. I was on a one by four. Let me change it to a one by eight. And get a little more. So you can look at this on any time frame, which is pretty cool. You could look at these on this 30-minute bars if you wanted to. That would be a really neat way of looking at it. 
Uh, so here's where it opened today. All right, so let's see. There's another question here from Stephen. Does this represent aggressive buying like the imbalance footprint? It's not using the imbalance algorithm. Um, this is not using the imbalance algorithm. This is this is showing you a breakdown of the uh, bid traded volume on the left and ask traded volume on the right. And you, when you add them up, it just shows you the total volume. So the width, total width, like here, this would be the most the high the POC. There's a lot of volume that traded here at these these prices, but it gives you an idea of how much of it was. Uh, bid traded, how much of it was ask traded. We'll put together some formal documentation on this, um, but that's the idea. And if you know what you could do, you could change, if you don't like all the color and you just want it to be a single color, you see where this um, cell setup is four shades, you can do fixed color. And that gets away from all that shading. You still can see the delta but it gets away from all those other shades and it might make it easier to read. In fact, I like this view better, frankly. It's just a little bit simpler and cleaner. I can see the delta within the bar. Um, but um, what you're looking for is really, look for, I, I, would, I would encourage you just to spend some time looking at it uh, and witness the different shapes. Some of these are gonna be compressed and tight and fat. Others are going to be elongated that are more maybe bulging at the top or the bottom. Um, and see, so it's it's really neat way to uh, view the data. And of course, I've got the open and close bar next, next to it. So this one here opened up here, closed down here, had a low of here and a, and a high here. So that is kind of my quick introduction to what these uh, the bid ask profile is um, there's certainly a lot that you could do when it comes to application and we'll, we'll probably do a follow-up webinar on that on some additional resource material on doing that but we want to get get some initial information out that this is now in the software and let you start playing around with it if you have questions though don't hesitate to shoot them our way be more than happy to answer that. So at this point I want to kick it over to Anthony and Anthony you can let me I'll stop sharing my screen you can take it and show the edge zones the new feature there and then I'll get back into these other features. Well this is great this is great timing with what a very catchable move that happened about eight nine minutes ago right now and then in with these edge zones. First, give me a quick sound check. Everybody can hear me, I imagine. We did one earlier. This is a filter footprint, filtered footprint of um, the S&P for about a, over 150 contracts. This is right before the close at 315 Central. About, I don't know, 10 minutes ago, inside 10 minutes ago, there were some details that came down on Cohen and he's the former Trump attorney. And he said he paid $130,000. I'm, I'm bringing this right into today's update and some of the value of, of, of these edge zones. But he paid $130,000. The kicker was it was to change the outcome of the election. So then that brings in FEC federal regulation, uh, legality, and everything else. So the market doesn't like it. Whether you got short or not, you should realize, okay, it's not certainly something that's not bullish. You could see the selling came in right at this time, and you could kind of see where they came down. This is a filter for when there is two consecutive prices that has orders more than 150. I'm going to start with the filter and move out from there. Two, now, they'll get red in here or green when it's a singular one, and I wanted that to, to still be able to see it, but they won't paint across unless they're consecutive, okay? So you could be sure that this double stack area, I call them consecutive, call them double stack, triple stack, but this 59 quarter area is gonna be some resistance. Remember, edge zones are tracking where the mar market picks up a little tempo. Buying comes in, selling comes in, some semblance of an imbalance between aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers, all right? So let's go, away from this filter a second. 
or show you, look at what the selling was right into the 3 o'clock cash close, right? You think that's going to be resistance and, and hard for the market to pop through? Of course. The only thing that gets painted across, again, are double or triple consecutive prices of aggressive activity. Let's draw this across. You see this? This happens to be a few. You draw it across, and you can see how well it holds price. Forget about the zero by zero. That just means there wasn't big activity at those prices. But this is a rotational price or look at, let me change the color of my pen here a second. This is a rotational look at the price, and it keeps bouncing off of this green area, all right? So it's pretty significant. I'm watching this S&P come back a little bit. But the, um, where do I want to forget how to erase drawings already? The, um, the significance then you could see of the um, bottom here, triple stack, comes into play at 69 even later on. Look at this triple stack. You say, well, where did that start, Anthony? And you'd say, well, right back here. Right after the open, they rally this thing up. And you can see it come across, and it uses the um, the market price uses it as really good support through this entire boring chart that we had in the first couple hours um, this morning. So that's a filtered look at the edge zones. The edge zones. I don't want to get too deep into what those are. They've been out for about eight or nine months. This is an addition or an update to filter out two or more, three or more. And I'll show you briefly how to add them. So if I click into the footprint, then left click, mod. if I right click, let's do it again. Right click into the footprint, left click, modify FP, left click, highlight it. That brings up the edge zone um, fields that you could manipulate here. All right. And not to get too boring, but the consecutive feature was added to then show two or more, or if I click in here, three or more, four or more, five or more. If you get five or more, you might not get many instances, right? So you play with these, and, and in all fairness, um, I've been looking at this, playing with different levels, different imbalance numbers, MINDIF, and consecutive levels to really get a, a my head around the best criteria for it. I just come out of the box. Now, this isn't a new concept to me or anyone who's been trading for a period of time. This is the real reasons for support or resistance. Where the market picks up speed and breaks out is important. The edge zones just make it more visible. All right. So let's get back, let's back out of this and let's in fact back out of this chart. Um, let me just pull up this chart as to show you guys what had happened. Let's get rid of those. All right, so let me bring that. Let me bring up the chart that I've been using to play with these numbers. You can see my tabs up above to give you a sense of uh, when I make a setting that I kind of like, I create a new tab, right? So I don't have to keep going back. So what was that? What was this? If I like a setting and I start like you know, I start thinking that it's something, I'm onto something. I'll create another tab and then move forward. That's just the way. I, um, you know, I like to, to fish around with these different, these different numbers and, and volume criteria and everything else like that. I want to start it here. I wanted to start here. Number one, this is a four point and figure footprint. For nobody that know, doesn't know much about point and figure, it's also abbreviated P and F. You don't have to be a point and figure expert. Here's what you have to know about point and figure. Follow my pen. And I'm not being condescending or simplistic. Follow my pen. This is how a market moves. It rotates, right? If you can't follow it, you can't trade it. So it's really important to understand the, um, the rotation of a market. So this is a four-point figure. You guys have heard my uh, webinars before, metaphors. I tell a story about when you punch a guy in the face and he doesn't even flinch, what are you going to do? Well, I know I'm going to run the other way, okay? The market's price does the same thing. When the market gives it a lot of a nice right cross or reaches back and slugs it and the price can't go up, chances are it's bearish or it's absorbed it all. Now, let's not kid ourselves. I don't know if that's going to be the case right here, right here, but I start questioning why couldn't it go up? Why couldn't it go up? 
when you start taking this real-time data in real time and saying to yourself that the market might be stumbling lower. You see all these edge zones that make it visible. They come in. This isn't a filter. This is adding up every aggressive buyer and seller. It's, it's measuring an imbalance, and if there is one, it goes green. If it meets the criteria of a double stack or consecutive, it'll paint. When you get below it, it starts to show you that the market is potentially getting weak. Again, just think, punch someone in the face and he falls down, well, hopefully that's what should have happened. You punch him in the face and he doesn't even blink. Now what? You can almost assume what's going to happen next in that particular fight or scenario, and that's what the market is. It's a fight. It's constantly got longs and, and, and shorts, buyers and sellers duking it out, trying to fight and see who wins. Sometimes nobody's winning, and that's that chop sideways that um, – that you get when there's nothing really that's of significant of significance that's going on. So now let's go to some other features, not features, but other um, ways to use this. Forget about the delta stuff at the bottom here, and forget about each red or green that comes across. If it doesn't paint across, it's because it didn't qualify for the consecutive double stack. So we could take this, and I'm not here to show you that this is good. I'm not here to cheerlead it on. I'm just telling you that years and years of trying to find better ways to look at the same thing, I've helped create because these edge zones do that. It shows where tempo picks up. It shows where support and resistance should form based on trap traders and everything else. So if you look at this particular double stack, it happened. Let's see where it happened. Before this, and it came in here and use this great resist. Remember, this is just two ticks. This is one price and this is another price. You ever go and you, and you talk to people that have got two or three points worth of support or, or resistance? That's eight, 12 ticks. A lot could happen in eight or 12 ticks, right? These are two ticks. So you could see, this is today too, by the way, or, or um, maybe yesterday, this is yesterday morning. So you could see, look how great resistance it worked in here. Rotated in, came out. I'll take it back because it formed right here. It formed at 6 o'clock in the morning on the 20th. So that was yesterday morning. Forms here, and if I take it to the right, of course, it works pretty well. Here's triple stack green. Remember, it's two or more. Works really well in there. Works really well through here. This is where it formed. Came up, rotated down, and, and everything else. Now, you can't make this stuff up. I don't want people to look at this and say, oh, they're going to make $10,000 a day. I just want you to, to look at it and say, I got a way to qualify my trades. I got a way to strip out some randomness. I got a way to understand better support so now I have a better chance of trading it. One of the weaknesses of trading is consistency. You know, I tell people I'd rather you be consistently bad at something than inconsistently good. At least you got the skill set to be consistent. So when we take this across, you can see finally then it throws in this red and we've seen where it then became good resistance. Now I'm taking this to real time. This is what's happening since this cone story came out about five minutes before I came on. Really good selling. Now he was it coming down the wire, and it's important to go through, even though it's an update for the software. Comes in and the, and they say that he's plea. There's a guilty plea, but as soon as he said he did it for the intention to change the outcome of the election. I don't care if you knew how bearish it was, you better have known it wasn't bullish. And you can see this quadruple stack selling comes right back into it. And this buying right here, they zip through it and they can't, it's going to be really hard to get back through there, at least for a while. These reds and greens do not let them confuse you. We left them in there because I like to see in real time when some selling comes in to see if it's getting the market to go their way. But if they're not painted across, they don't qualify for the for the double stack or beyond, right? So this is if I if let me change this a second. You see how there's four? If I um if I go to modify it, I go to highlight it, and I go to consecutive and let's look at five or more, watch what'll happen to that. It goes away. Because that was only four. But I got news for you, if you're looking at five you're not going to see many instances at all where it's going to happen. So let me reapply it, and that easy, you could see consecutive selling. Um, a good way to remember why edge zones will appear is 
when the market picks up speed and goes down fast or up fast. And a metaphor story I like to use is if you're sitting in a room and someone runs by you real fast and then afterwards they say, what was he wearing? You're going to have trouble understanding it, right? So you got to, therefore you did what? You missed it. You missed what he was wearing. He went by fast. He ran by you. So when things move fast, the point of the story is most people miss it, including price. When price moves fast down, did most people miss buying it? No, because they could buy it at better prices. It moved down. They miss selling it. So generally when people miss something, they're anxious to do it the next time up. That's why these levels are pretty, pretty accurate, okay? Now all of this got to take into account is news driven. And I tell my group all the time in, in, in the in edge classes, in the trading room every day, to be aware, to take advantage of opportunities um, of catching this downside. I don't toot my own horn and say what I did caught this or not. I know people in this room that follow me watching the market knew what to do, whether they caught it or not, but they knew and understood what to do because the tempo picked up. So it's great because a story picked up the tempo, which these edge zones cover, which the consecutive filter only paints when they're stacked. In this case, two or more, two or greater. So it's, um, I think you'll find a lot of value in them. I think people who have seen the single edge zones have found a ton of value in it. Uh, it's not some new concept. It's a better way to see the same thing. So when you want to learn order flow, which is a big missing concept and technique in most people's trading, generally people read books and they, they learn from some people who know what they're talking about and most don't, just like any business. The key to order flow is understanding what and when to recognize price action, but most importantly, what is the right question to ask and when do I ask it? What is the right question to ask and when do I ask it? The moment you punch a guy in the face, the moment to pay attention. What's his reaction? Does he fall down? Does he stand up and, uh, and not flinch? Again, the right question and when to ask it. That's watching flow and the battle between buyers and sellers. Now let me go and ask a couple questions Christine's got one of them. So for the settings, depending on the market, do you have to adjust both the threshold and min diff in addition to consecutive? You don't have to. You don't have to adjust the threshold imbalance or the min diff. But I played with them in order to, to uh, get kind of a sweet spot of levels. So with the settings that she has for the crude chart, the zone stopped plotting when I set it to two consecutive. So I guess exactly. So if you're going to need more level, you're going to need uh, to lower your criteria, Christine. Your min diff is too high. Generally, your min diff is going to be the main adjuster that gets you more or less levels. So adjust that level down. You'll get more up. You'll get less. So that's great. And everybody that has updated uh, to with I think the, within the last two weeks we'll have access to the functionality of right clicking in the footprint left clicking modify FP and then in the highlight is all the edge zone functionality but everyone should have this this is not a paid add-on that you have to get it's included in everyone's desktop subscription if you're a desktop subscriber but um, that answers her question. Another question, the 441 by 48 aggressive buyers would suggest an in increase. I'm not sure if I'm understanding it, but a 441 by 48 aggressive buyers would suggest increase in price if that's what you're trying to say. And at what point do we see that happen? The 441 and 48, I don't, I don't know where that might be, but if you're if you're looking at generally the number on the left though is aggressive sellers. Forty eight by forty eight is aggressive buyers. Um, that's why the edge zones are creating the visibility. You know, aggressive buyers are green. Trevor has them in blue. Aggressive sellers are in red. What should you see when you see aggressive selling? It should go down. What if it doesn't? 
It's probably going to pop. It's a probability game. That's all it is, right? And all this probability of staying underneath this quadruple stack was you'd look back. If you didn't know any better, you'd be like, what the heck came out? You know, it was after 3.30 and this modified reopen, and we break, they break them like nine po or six points. Must have been a story. Well, yeah, it was a story. Not only should you know that it's a story, you should know what the story was. You should never be in front of your screens and have to say, why did that happen and why did this happen? Not only should you should you minimize those misses, but you should be able to jump on it and sell it. And then what's great about fundamental news that moves the market is if it doesn't move the market soon after you got long or short, you're probably wrong and you can manage your risk. It's easier to manage your risk when you have to manage it quickly. Because, you know, like in a news event, if it's bearish, it should go down. There should be no games being played. It's exactly what happened here. When they added the comments, and I'll cover this tomorrow in the room, but when they added the comments, he did it to affect the election. That starts to overlap federal regulation law. And it's not a huge deal, but big enough to break us these six or seven points. We'll see how the market absorbs it through the overnight session. And if you don't come to the room tomorrow, and if we're higher than we were when these comments came off, then the smart money doesn't care about it. Don't worry about what the news and the pundits say. But getting back to the update of these consecutive levels, what's key is right click, left click, modify FP, go into highlight, and in this consecutive, under display consecutive column, allows you to adjust two or more. You could, I use the word double stack, consecutive means the same thing. It's just back to back, or back to back to back, sellers that are imbalanced to the buyers next to it. Any other questions you guys or girls have? This is a, um, when you could distill something down to what you want, and uh, it's, it's like anything else, it gets better. Again, this isn't a new concept. I learned the importance of tempo uh, before I even got a prop firm job in 2000. I understood the importance of speed. And this is just the best way to recognize it. And then you could build on knowing what to do with it. So I hope you guys have liked the I, There was a lot of positive feedback on Edge Zone since they were um, – introduced about eight, nine months ago, and now this is like the first major, major is a couple other things that we'll talk about, I talk about in the room, I talk about to the edge community that I'm not really talking about today, uh, but these consecutive ones is one of the bigger updates, and it's just a nice filter to get uh, maybe a better way to look at the same thing. It is for me, and I think it will be for you guys. Any other questions? So, Paul, what do you mean? What is the size of the consecutive four by? You mean the min diff and imbalance percentages? So here, I'll give you guys a real time idea. We do this in the room every day, but this is the two levels to worry about. That's why they're banging around them. Once they got through here, and this is when it was a little faster. You can't be you can't be surprised that it goes down another two points because it rotated in and out of here once. Here it rotated in and out twice. Uh, Paul, let me go back to your question. Uh, I, I don't still I don't think I understand it. Let me go to it right now. What is the? Hey, Trevor could answer that. The size four by. Uh, I don't understand the question either. I think he's talking about this column. If you're looking at this. Oh, screen. that's just the um, pixel. That's just the pixel width, or something like that. Yeah. Um, In fact, here I'll change it. I'm I'm all right because I got this saved. So we'll go to uh, one, and we'll apply it. And. Yeah, see a change? <laughs> no, it stayed the same. Well, it's probably it's, if you say hollow, that's probably when it applies. I don't know. Yeah, let's, let's move on. It, it's not a very important, super important setting there. No, I don't use it, so it's not. Any other questions? What's the significance of the three bottom columns and colors? Nothing as far as this goes, uh, Barbara. Th this has been around for Barbara, a while. Barbara, I'll actually talk about that here in just a moment when I um, Perfect. show another uh, chart. So. 
I'll hand it back to Trevor, but I'll hang around, Trevor. So if there's any okay. questions at your end, then at the end of your your presentation, I'll be here. So all right, could, sounds good. All yeah. right, so um, the next topic I'm going to talk about is it's a new bar interval or periodicity, if you want to think about it, and it's the delta reversal. And to help understand what that is, let's first cover what just a plain old delta interval is. So I just have a footprint up. This is an imbalance footprint. I'm going to right click, modify footprint. And under source, one of these source types is delta. Not everybody uses it. A lot of you guys are probably using point and figure or bar or range, but delta. If I set it to delta and say 200, which is what I have it set to, and by the way, this is crude oil, what it does is it builds a bar that when a level of delta plus or minus 200 is achieved, it starts a new bar. So these bars, uh, these are very order flow sensitive. They're uh, very sensitive to shifts in order flow, which is really a, a really neat way to build bars because it's not building a bar on time or uh, price action. It's simply order flow. So I have it set to 200 here, and, and you can see I've added a footprint bar statistics down at the bottom. Barbara, um, this will address some of your question. And I've basically I've added three rows. Uh, delta is the minimum or the middle column. Min delta, which is the minimum value delta achieved within the for the bar, and then maximum delta. I'm just showing this because if you look across here at delta. Can see it's either plus or minus 200 and that confirms our setting which is I have it set to 200 so this this uh, interval Delta has been available it's been available for a long time but what we've added is this right here this little checkbox that says reversal so I'm going to go ahead and check that and before I hit apply Anthony just talked briefly about the point and figure or the reversal charts that he uses on the footprint. And that's a price reversal. Um, very popular, very useful way to build the bars. Well, this is also a reversal, except it's not a reversal of price. It's a reversal of delta. So I'm going to hit apply. And I'm going to change this to like 100. One of the things, a little tip, I found that if you look at these, these reversals, you're usually going to go with a little bit lower value than what you would if it was unchecked. You don't have to, but you'll see it, it definitely gives me a better, to me, this is a more pure way of looking at the data. I can see the rotations better. Um, but if you look at this, what is, what's it mean by reversal? Simply means when the market moves uh, from the extreme by a hundred, the extreme meaning the max or min delta, it'll start a new bar. So let's take a look at this down here where it bottomed out. This is crude oil, by the way. You can see the min delta was minus 312. So it had, there was selling pressure as it traded down. The minimum delta it achieved was minus 312. When it began to bounce or stabilize, I should say, as soon as it bounced 100 delta, I mean it reached minus 212, this bar closed and it started the new bar. That's what we mean by reversal. So it, when it reverses 100 delta, it starts a new bar. So this bar is going, and you could see this one achieved a maximum of 363. When it finally pulled back 100, which is 263, it started a new bar. So um, that's, that's pretty much what this is. It, it's a way to build new bars based on that order flow and pullbacks in order flow. So any questions, any questions on, on that? Does that make sense? I know not, not everybody's going to use all the things you're hearing today, but certain subgroups of you are really going to grab hold of certain concepts and we want to make sure that we're covering those uh, accordingly. Plus, you'll have this video to refer back to. 
Okay, so there's a question. Uh, Christine, could you go through there one more time how a new bar starts forming? Yeah, so let's again look at our, let's look down here where this market bottomed out. And this market, it, it helps if we could see it trading in real time, but this thing traded down and it had it achieved a minimum delta of minus 312. I'm just pointing out that that was the minimum amount that it achieved. I don't care what the number is. It's just it, it happened to be minus 312 here. And then the delta it began to stabilize and began to the delta actually went from minus 312 to probably minus 300, minus 280. It started heading less negative. And when it hit a hundred, when it grew a hundred from the low, it starts a new bar. And you might say, why a hundred? Because that's what I have it set to. I have it set to reversal of a hundred. And you could set it to be whatever you want it to be. But that's that's what I have it set to here. Okay, good. Um, you can add more stats if you want, but this is a nice pure way to see delta and then the min-max because it helps you learn it, how, how it's moving. And just so you know, this isn't like point and figure where it's an up bar, down bar, up bar, down bar. You can see this market, you know, continued to trade up and you can see like here when it pulled back 100, it started a new bar. Here it pulled, it, it continued to rally. When it pulled back 100, it started a new bar. Uh, it's not like it's X's and O's. It doesn't alternate from the min and the max. Um, it's, but I want to point that out because if you're thinking that, it doesn't behave that way. It just watches both extremes. And when it pulls back 100 from either extreme, it starts a new bar. And again, you can see I've, I've got, the, got the edge zone. Well, it looks like a consecutive edge zone on here. Yeah, I do. Okay, so that's, I don't want to um, belabor the point. I just want to introduce you to these concepts. Um, the next one is, it's another interval. This one's actually pretty neat. It's a, the imbalance delta. So you know how we're looking at these imbalance. This is an imbalance footprint. And you see this, let's focus right now before I change it. You see this 30 versus 135. That would be, uh, the imbalance delta here would be positive 105, positive 105. Well, how do I know that? Well, it's 30 subtracted from 135 leaves us 105, right? Okay, so this new interval lets us build new bars only when a certain level of imbalance delta is achieved. So we just looked at delta, which is side to side. Now we're looking at an imbalance delta. So let's take a look. Right click, modify, source. This is fairly technical if you're new. This can be, I know, I know this can seem like, whoa, you know, it might be a lot, but these are some real edges, real ways to look at data in the markets and build bars and build charts in ways that very, very few of the trading community are. So the whole idea here is to provide some unique ways that you can uh, create some unique views for yourself to create an edge off of. So I choose a source type. I went from delta to imbalance delta. I'm going to take a minute here to describe this. If I could cover this up for a minute and you just focus on these, this is what you're used to looking at when you set up your imbalance footprint. So just set it up, set it up uh, however you want. I have it set. I'm going to actually lower this since we're looking at, um, actually, let's look at 250. 200, 200, and I'll leave my imbalance at my percent there. I'm going to click apply. I need to change this to be like, I'll set that to 200 as well. I'll set to too high. All right. So what we're looking at here is you set your imbalance up. So as you can see the imbalance that I um, 
we'll be looking at. And then what the delta level is, it's saying when the delta, you add up all the imbalances, and when it achieves 200, start a new bar. So instead of looking at delta, it looks at the imbalance delta. So let me set this to be like uh, 400. That's still a little high. Again, we're looking at crude oil. Okay, so the whole idea is, is to build a chart based off the imbalance delta. That's what I wanted to show. And then to even go one step further, you can do it off of reversal. So I'm going to set it to, this is similar to what we just looked at but it's actually using a reversal of 250 imbalance delta instead of just delta. So anyway, I don't want to get into too, too much more. Here's a question from Joe. Do delta reversals only work on imbalance footprints? No. So if I go back, it's I'm on an imbalance right now. If I went to the bid ask profile like we were looking at earlier, you know, there it is. Now I've got a lot going on here. My coloring needs cleaned up. But literally this is, I'm looking at a bid ask. Actually, let's look at a, a volume footprint. It's clean here. Here's a volume footprint and you can set it to say delta. There's your delta, delta reversal. There's just a pure delta. So you can look at this stuff on any footprint type is what, that's the point, okay? Um, we'll, we'll crank out some more materials on these. This is, I know, fairly technical. It's the first time we've presented on these, so it's not, I don't think I got my pitch down as good as I'd like to on describing it, just being honest. Um, so hopefully, hopefully you can see the value, um, but if you have questions as you start to play around with it, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, let's see, well, here is some ones I had set up. Now, I'll just leave it at that. I've, so the next, the next thing I wanted, uh, that was on our agenda, there's two more things. These are quick ones. It was estimated place in queue, which is, this is really cool. So I'm going to open up a dome. I'm going to, uh, click trade. I'm going to click Dom trader and the market. Is it it's closed right now? That stinks. Okay, well, let's see if I can find. Okay, the treasuries are open. So, at least I think they are. So, what I'm going to do is if you, when your market's open, if you go to setup and go to trading preferences, go to display. What this does, this feature, it's called estimated place in queue. And if you go to display and you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a new setting here called, it's show estimated place in queue. And there's three settings. So if you need to check the box first and then select what you want. But if I say lots ahead of my working order and hit apply and OK, when I place an order, all right, so let's see what markets are open it's crude oil. yeah everything's kind of closed right now all right so I'll just I'll this will even make it quicker I'll just describe it so when you select this and do this do it uh, tomorrow or when the market reopens if I choose lots ahead of me and I place a working order you'll see a little number right here and it'll show you, it's an estimate, uses algorithms to, to estimate how many, or, how many, not orders, but how much volume's in front of you. So if I placed an order right here, right now, there's 63 contracts, it would show 63 because there's 63 ahead of me because my order just went in. But as orders start to either trade or get canceled, it'll show me move in. It'll show an estimate of how many are in front of me. So it becomes real important when you're right when the market's right at your price, you can get an idea of do you need to go to the market on this thing, or is there a hundred orders, hundred contracts in front of you, or whatever. Another one you can do is orders ahead of you. So see how many orders. Or you can do both, both lots and orders, and it'll show you both numbers. 
it's pretty neat. I've been playing around with this feature, and what you're going to find, it's, it's interesting because you can get an idea of the institutional size that's sitting there as well, because you might see 500 available at a price, and I put my order in. It shows there's 500 ahead of me, but it only is 10 orders. So that tells me it's, there's, there's really only 10 orders. One of those could get canceled, which could be a, large, a, large, a lot of the size, and all of a sudden, now there's maybe only 20 contracts ahead of me, uh, or whatever. You get my point. So check this out. It's just a built-in feature, um, and uh, it really provides, I think, some useful information when it comes to the dome. Um, and then last, last but not, uh, let's I'm just read questions. Last but not least is server-side bracket orders. So now when you uh, place bracket orders from within the software, they're all server-side, which is great because then if you close the software, or software were to crash or whatever, um, the orders are always working uh, on the server, from the server, not from the software. That provides just an added level of assurance uh, for you as a trader. So that's just immediately available and automatically available. You don't have to make, there's no setting there. It's just the way it works now in the new, this new release, this new mid-year update. So um, no settings again for that. It just, that's how it works. All right. Um, before we wrap up, I'm just looking here. Ed, how many targets can be used in the OCO? Um, normally, there are some other ways to do it, but out of the box, um, when you set brackets, it's a single bracket. But there are some other ways. You can reach out to the product specialists at CQG that I believe there's some other ways to have multiple legs. Just reading through a question here. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, it's Chuck, great suggestion, like basic order type tutorial and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here. Obviously, these are these are smart orders. And um, if you go to, just, just to show you guys support and go to open help, go to trading and review, um, let's see, somewhere in here, there's order. Orders and no, I don't think that's it. Anyway, I would poke around in here and you'll find some uh, all kinds of stuff. Getting started with trading. There's there's a lot of stuff in here and it's all up to date and well organized. So I would check this out. Um, Barbara, I don't understand your question. I'm sorry. If you want to restate it, go ahead. And I'll, I'll try and cover it. Are there any other questions from anybody at this time? Um, these, these features, every one of them is included automatically. They're in there. You just need to uh, find them. That's why we're, that's the purpose, purpose of this webinar was really just to show you, um, show you. Here is that move Anthony was referring to, but on this bid ask profile, you can see the liquidity got real thin here, but then notice how the from basically 58 down to 52, it's almost all on the bid. You can you can kind of see that. Um, what am I on? This is a one by six chart. Um, Ed, you're asking, can you link a dome and a footprint like together? You can't like link them and turn them into like a single uh, chart or single window. However, you can link them so that if you change the symbol in one, it'll change it in the other. So that uh, that's a nice that's a nice feature. But I mean it's common for people to set it up like this. Just set where you'll you know their their uh, their dome will be fixed. Now it doesn't share a price access. That's probably what you're asking, the price access isn't shared, but you can you can stretch this out to kind of match match that match the price axis. Um, you can see I pretty much I about got it right there, and then you can you know that might be a good way to do it. All right, 
Um, any other questions? We're just about at an hour here, and uh, was recorded. We'll post it up to our website as well as our YouTube and Vimeo channel tomorrow morning. You can review any of this. Uh, feel free to uh, shoot us any questions. Here's a link. I'm going to post it in the chat window. Um, this this is. Uh, there might be two links in there, Trevor. I po posted mine in case people yep. want to see these edge zones tomorrow in the room. Okay. You can hit that and then whatever you're going to yeah, post. Yeah, I'm just sending, I just sent another link. It's basically out to the blog. It has a little more, well, it's information on everything we've just covered. Some, just a little bit more info, um, although the video is probably your best resource. So if that is... Oh, another question. Can you use the platform as a standalone without using the trading part? Yes, you can. We highly recommend linking a trading account, though, even if you don't plan on trading. But it just allows you to classify or qualify as a non-professional trader, and that will help save you some exchange fees because you have a linked account. If you don't link a trading account, you just sign up as a professional trader. That's how it works with the exchanges. So you pay more for the exchange fees, but um, it's, you know, you just, you're just getting the data. You don't have any trading capability um, and you're not obligated to trade obviously in any way. You have a built-in SIM or demo that you can SIM trade in practice and then when you're ready to go live, fund an account with one of our supported brokers, and off you go. And you'd save money then on your exchange fees uh, by linking up a live trading account. So we're not a broker. We get that question a lot. We're not a broker. You'd have to have a, an account at one of the brokers we support. They give you a trading ID that you put into the platform, and that's what you uh, – that's what qualifies you as a non-professional, and you get those discounted fees. Any other questions for either Anthony or I at this point? Okay. All right, so one last comment, like I showed you earlier, but you can either have the text on or have it off. Um, so some people may want to just see it like this. Others may want it overlaid so you can see the actual values. But play around with these. If you have questions or some feedback, let us know. We'd love to... Um, Love to hear it. So I'm going to wrap. We'll wrap up with that. You guys have a great evening and rest of the week. Thanks.